Leprechaun Back to the Hood is a 2003 horror comedy directed by Steven... Take your best shot. Steven something, whom you probably know from his highest and lowest rated movie on Rotten Tomatoes, Back to the Hood. Yeah, he hasn't really done too many movies, but that's okay, because he did the, I think this is the sixth, yeah, sixth installment of the Leprechaun series. We are just zipping through these, you guys. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. I am back. I had a little hiatus for a while, but I'm glad to return on this most festive green occasion. We are going to be talking about the sixth installment, Back to the Hood, of the Leprechaun series. Every year I've kind of talked about a different Leprechaun movie, and we've now made it to Back to the Hood. Uh, this is the last of the Leprechaun movies that include Warwick Davis's performance as the Leprechaun, which sucks because, no, Warwick Davis doesn't suck. The fact that this is the last one with him sucks. They went on to make another movie called Leprechaun Returns. I have not seen that movie. That will be for next St. Patrick's Day, but let's just say that I've heard it suffers a lot from lacking Warwick Davis. He, he, he kind of is the reason that all of these movies are as popular as they are, and they're not even the most popular movies uh, to go around. But with that said, I really think each of the movies is highlighted by Warwick Davis. Without him, people wouldn't really check out these movies. And throughout these reviews, and with this one included, the movie really shines because of him. You know, the story happens, there's other characters, and some are better than others, but he is really the constant, uh, the constant throughout the series, we, we can say. So with Leprechaun Back to the Hood, we take the story that kind of started in Leprechaun in the Hood, where Lep is in the hood, and we return to the ghetto, we return to this, this little town where this woman is a hairdresser, she isn't really getting along in her job quite well, and she really wants more money. Well, she stumbles across this, um, this construction project and discovers a pot of gold. And by pot, I mean treasure chest of gold, because Lep likes to mix it up. She opens it, and even though she talked to a psychic at the beginning of the movie, saying, you are going to stumble across treasure, don't take it, she takes it, and her and her four friends divvy up the gold uh, and get a little greedy with it and decide to spend a lot of Lep's gold on a bunch of random miscellaneous stuff, of course including drugs and clothing. Well, about 30 minutes into the movie, our leprechaun friend returns and wreaks havoc on the group of friends. So... This movie follows the same formula as all of the other Leprechaun movies. People steal Lep's gold, Lep wants it back, he kills people, they kill the Leprechaun. Sorry, spoilers, but that's how all of these movies go. When it comes to Leprechaun Back to the Hood, I heard rave reviews that this was one of the better ones and that um, there's a lot of funny parts and, you know, the Lep really gets to shine. And while there were some funny parts, and while I enjoyed myself through scenes of this movie, a lot of this movie is just kind of boring to me. And maybe that's just because I've been through six of the Leprechaun movies at this point, but with the other ones, there was always a level of playfulness. And with this one, it's more grounded and serious than all of the other ones. Even the kills in this movie don't feel as fleshed out. There are many scenes where the Leprechaun's going to do something, and it just kind of cuts away to something else, something that was probably cheaper to shoot, which kind of sucks, uh, because that's why I paid to watch the movie, to see the Leprechaun do his Irish shenanigans. Well, nonetheless, we have this story. We have this woman who is kind of uh, taken by greed with the Leprechaun's gold, and I heard reviews online saying, you know what? You know, the Leprechaun movies are alright, but this one has a, a message in it. And while I guess I could see that message in the movie, I didn't quite feel like it owned up to it. 
The main girl who got this gold and kind of bought all this stuff, though she had different clothes, and even that was kind of off and on, she kind of wore a tank top throughout the whole movie, she didn't really change as a character. From the beginning to the end, she was basically the same chick. And I don't know, that didn't really give me a good basis for who she was. I knew that her and this guy had a relationship. Uh, I knew that she wanted to do better at her job. I knew she had a friend and that she was trying to do the right thing. But other than that, she was just kind of girl. And all the characters were just kind of characters waiting around for Leprechaun. And like I said, he doesn't even appear until 30 minutes into this movie, which it gets kind of draggy, uh, especially when all of the other movies from the get-go, which one of my favorite ones being Leprechaun 3, jump right into the shenanigans. And this one takes a long time to get there. And if they would have fleshed out those characters more and really given you a reason to root for her and her friends, I could have got behind it. But it was laughable up until the point of the Leprechaun, and then, of course, the Leprechaun does his thing. And the leprechaun doing his thing was fine. There's a scene where he stabs a dude with a bong. That's in the movie. Uh, there is a scene where his eye falls out. And he says, my Irish eye is smiling. That's all in the movie. All great stuff. I enjoy the leprechaun. I enjoy Warwick Davis, as I've mentioned. But even with him, I feel like some parts of this movie drag. The ending was nice. They kill him like six times in a row, it feels like. Which was a little overkill, if you know what I mean. And yeah, that's, that's Leprechaun Back to the Hood. Not really a whole lot to say. I would love to say more if I could. One thing I will say is that, you know, this isn't an Academy Award winning film. This isn't, you know, Martin Scorsese or some really highfalutin movie. It's Leprechaun Back to the Hood, okay? So I'm not going to really nitpick. But what I can say about some of the directing and the shots of, in this movie is that the bare minimum basic thing is that you have the audience understand what happens from point A to point B. And there are some parts in Back to the Hood where I just didn't know what was happening. They just cut away from things, the transition was really weird. It could have been handled a lot better. Which, you know, at this point, who really cares, I guess, because we're six movies in, but I actually have a soft spot for the Leprechaun movie. So to see this one kind of go under my expectations was kind of a letdown because even though In the Hood was over the top and zany, you liked the characters. You wanted to see what happened with them. In this one, stuff just happens and the Leprechaun is green. With that being said, I will give Leprechaun Back to the Hood a 2.5 out of 5 skulls on the R.I.P. Reviews rating scale. Yeah, back to the hood. How many times did I say Leprechaun in this review? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know, what do you think about these movies? Are you a fan of the Leprechaun films? Because I certainly am, to an extent, to an extent. There's a little asterisk at the end there, because I love Warwick Davis. I love several of these movies, a few of them drag. This one, In Space. There, you know, In Space even was goofier, I can say that. This one just dragged at the beginning. There were parts that I enjoyed, yada, yada, yada. I said this already. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Remember, for all things Halloween, this is Haunt Former.